really today and tonight at PTSG, just to give you some history, the company formed in 2007, so just over 10 years old, <coughs> public for just over two and a half years, came to the market in February 15. Myself, John Foley and Bob Morton created the business um, back in 2007, really off the back of a model I created in 2000. So a unique business model in a sector where you've seen some, um, some disaster stories over the years. I'm happy to talk about why they were good and why they were bad. Um, we say unique and a lot of people smile and say a lot of people say that. Um, but when we talk about Peter's G, we do mean unique. And so let me touch on why. And I'll, I'll click through the slides as we go along. Really, you've got a chance to read them. I'm not going to read off them. I'd prefer to talk to you really what a Peter's G is about. Fundamentals, to give you some real history about it. That was our highlights, which came out in September, half year to June. You can see it for yourself. So PTSG, let me start at the beginning. Man in a van, engineered solution. Very much about doing works with men and or women, but 100% utilization of engineers. Oh, that's a big statement. 100% utilization. Every single thing we do, we measure. We measure on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Everything we do, we're accountable for in terms of delivery. We never get to the end of a month and think, have we had a good month or a bad month? We know where we are every day of the week. What helps us deliver that man in a van engineered solution is good scheduling. We have dedicated teams to how we do our work, how we schedule our work, the ability to cross sell, the ability to have less bed nights, less traveling within our teams, the ability of the business to actually drive density in the marketplace through scale, through size, through being local to everything we do. So our drive time is a lot, lot less than our competitors. And how does that help us? So the business is focused start to finish on margin. You see our margins over the year, over the years around the 20% EBIT margin. We're focused on that. In some sectors, that's very unusual. The FM marketplace we live in and working is very much single digit high volume. We're very much the opposite. We don't chase the volume other, other than we know it drives the margin. But if set as such, everything we do is around margin. And, and we do that, as I said, by the man in a van engineered solution. So this is what the business looks like, group structure. Four main trading divisions, and they're subdivided. The left hand side, the blue, very much the most developed part of the business, came from a previous business as well, which I had in 2000, ultimately sold in 2006. The business model generated access and safety. We have four trading divisions there. They're all market leaders. Most of them double the size of anybody else in those sectors. So a real compelling density model in terms of route to market, scale, size. If you look in the yellow, electrical services were the number one lightning protection business in the UK. You saw us do a large acquisition in the summer. That gave, us a, that gave us a size roughly twice of anybody in that marketplace. We're very, very um, competitive in those sectors. And if you look at other things like electrical testing, we're getting very dominant in those sectors as well. Building access specialists are a bit newer in terms of what we do, and that's a mixture of our steeplejack business and a high-level rope access business, very much complementary very specialist again when we say steeple jacks we don't mean long ladders we mean these days people doing rope access hanging off ropes abseiling and clearly as you can imagine you can charge accordingly we're doing specialist works in risky situations where we can charge the margins we want to achieve we're not we're not doing any mainstream activities we don't do anything our competitors do whatsoever in terms of how we do it and fire solutions. We've been in fire um, since the middle of 16. We launched the division just recently because we had it elsewhere while we built it. Very much fledgling. You're going to see us develop that over the next 18, 24 months. Very much started in fire in specialist nature, dry risers, uh, maintenance and installation, and then moved into um, sprinklers, residential sprinklers primarily, something which was born last year became very relevant this year with various incidents like Grenfell, which I'm sure you all know about. Um, 
in terms of that, it's very much a market of low margin. So why are we there? We're there because we're achieving great margins. We're not going to, we're not going to do anything which is dilutive. That's the structure of the business. What that gives you is a clear sense that we're able to cross-sell. The same buyers, the same supply chains are buying different activities. Huge opportunity for organic growth within PTSG in terms of cross-selling. At the moment, no more than 5% of our customers take more than one service line. The one thing a lot of people miss about PTSG, 17,000 customers, 150,000 properties. Every part of the business we've built, we've built on the back of another part. Let me give you an example. When we started our electrical services, we had 8,000 customers in access and safety. It's a ready-made target audience. It's very easy and very and something to be able to quickly establish market domination when we're able to cross-sell into those customers. We're already dealing with customers, we're already scheduling work, we're already delivering work, we're offering compliance services. So very much, it's, a, it's, a, it's not an easy sell, it's a very complementary sell, and it works very well. Fire, like I said, recently launched, the 17,000 customers to go out. All of which, in 150,000 assets, the majority have some type of fire. That's the structure of the business. Will we ever add to that? I get asked it regularly. Uh, yes, we may do. We also see lots of synergies in, in, in lateral development as well, other areas of what we do. So our operating model, customer diversification, I've just touched on numbers. Repeat business, so renewals are very important to us. We renew roughly, at the moment it sits at 88 to 90%. Some divisions are 90%. Some are 88, the average is about 88 now, it's slightly gone up from there. What does that say to us? It's a small statement but a big point. It means that our customers like us, we're the right price point and what we're doing is a good job. They don't renew work with us if we're not. We've got a lot of three and five year contracts, so we've got a lot of visibility of income and we have specific renewals department to do that across all of our business. Very important. And when, when I talk about something else in the model, you'll understand even more why it's important, clearly because of cost selling, but also because for every single pound of repair and compliance works we do, we generate one pound of repairs. So if we've got a hundred pound of maintenance, we'll get a hundred pound of repairs off it. We have for 10 years. If we win a 500,000 pound order today, it looks like a million pounds to us. So it's very important that we renew our work in terms of income. So, Staff utilisation, I talked about 100% utilisation. A lot of people raise their eyebrows when I say that and say, well, how do you take on new work? We have the ability through the maintenance work and the, the statutory work, but we also get in a, a great deal of repairs. And on the basis of the repairs, they don't always have to be done tomorrow. They can be done next week, sometimes the week after, etc. It gives us a flex within the model that we're able to put new work in. So it does give us that ability to do that. We measure everything with KPIs on a daily week basis, you have dedicated people to deliver all of the work. So we're very focused there. We have a national coverage, 17 locations around the country, in, in, a, lot of, in a lot of areas, the only true national player. Use of technology, I'm just going to slightly labour the point, very important to us. And why it's important to us, clarity, we wrote it ourselves, our own Android programmers wrote the software. It was really confirmation of everything we've done, but instead of being relying on people, it comes in a box. Very important, it gives us a scalable, efficient platform for growth. It doesn't strip out 100 people yesterday or last week, but it stops us putting those 100 people in as we grow. So we do real-time certification. The only people in the UK to do that. We don't have a back office filled, filled with 30, 40 people doing admin tasks, which we do electronically. It keeps us lean and mean. We're doing things in the market nobody else does. We're already into what does 2020 look like in terms of real-time dashboard, real dashboard reporting. We're a minimum of three years ahead of our competition. And it gives us that ability to be the million dollar question, which is PTSG. How can you be, and I'm, I'm a Yorkshire guy, so I'm gonna tell you it blunt. How can you be the cheapest in the market or the lowest, or the lowest cost in the marketplace and yet give the best service and yet make margins that outperform all of the sectors you're in? And the answer to the middle bit is efficiency. And that efficiency is not just generated by doing everything with a unique model. It's also the use of technology as we grow, as you can imagine. We're not shuffling bits of paper. It's very efficient. 
safety at the bottom, everything to us. Number one in everything we do. I'm not going to sit here and say your returns are the number one. They absolutely are very important to us. But safety in everything we do is critical to PTSG for obvious reasons. The safety of our people and the safety of the people we work for. That was H1 in terms of the split across the divisions. In terms of how we're done. The, the one point to really take away is the maintenance sides and compliance sides clearly attract a higher gross margin. The installation sides of the business, you've got a material content, so it'll always be lower margin by definition. And really, PTSG is very much a mix of the two. And that's what we're about. Roughly 60 40 or thereabouts to the compliance side. What we've got here is the, the results and the financial highlights for H1 2017. So I'll touch on those, but I'll try and add a bit more context as I go through. And in line with Andy's brief, I'll try and keep it quite, quite short. Don't make too much of detail. So see in the top, revenue 21.9 million, which is a growth H1 on H1 of 19%. With the acquisitions we've done through 2017, we're actually looking at a run rate of circa 50 million pounds. Paul mentioned that we listed in February 2015. Turnover in 2014 was 80 million. So in all intents and purposes, we've virtually tripled the turnover in just, or just under tripled the turnover in three years. If we look at just an operating profit, we continue, despite growing so aggressively, we continue to keep our operating margin around the 20% mark. Adjusted EPS, forecasting over AP for 2000, 2017, compared to just over 4p when we, when we listed in 2015. So what's our return on investment capital like? If we look at the ROTOC measure, the H1 numbers are just for six months. So if I annualise those, then you see that our return on investment capital, our ROTOC, is in the 50%, which is... <coughs> a strong return on way in excess of our, our cost of operating capital. And then last but not least really on this one is our net debt. Net debt at the end of half one was 12.2 million, way below what we've got for our banking facilities, so there remains significant headroom against our current facilities for future acquisitions and future growth. So I've just put in here a consolidated cash flow. Just really a headline for you, as you can appreciate, and any company that is growing so quickly, it's critical that we have um, good cash flow and also we have a good trading cash conversion. You see there, for year 2016, 50% increased our trading cash conversion of 64%, and we continue to drive that. And really, the last slide for me is, with any company growing so rapidly, it's critical that we have a disciplined use of cash in line with our strategy. So what I've developed here is what I call the capital allocation framework. So any time we get a request to spend money, I say, which one of these do boxes do it fall in? So the first one is reinvesting for um, organic growth. The second one is acquisitions in line with strategy. Third one is progressive dividend policy. And I've put here number four, which is for completeness, is returning any excess to shareholders. And as I'm sure you'll appreciate, a company in our stage of development with so many opportunities we don't expect anything in this box for a considerable amount of time. But whenever we're looking at our demands for um, cash, we always make certain it goes in boxes one to three. That said, it's critical that we maintain a strong balance sheet so we've got solid investment metrics for the future. Okay, thanks, Mark. I said I would pick uh, Lady up on, on something we said as an introduction. PTSG, very much not a buy and build model. And I say that because we're very much a marriage of organic growth and acquisition. If you look at PTSG as a whole today, we're about 50% acquisitive growth and about 50% organic growth. Organic growth, very important to us. A metrics which hasn't often been mentioned and or measured in failures in this sector in previous years. Organic growth to us is very much an endorsement of who we are, what we are, how we do it. We came to the market to do double digit organic growth. And that's what we've done, and that's what we'll continue to do. And we don't see uh, anything uh, deterring us from that conversation at the moment. Quite the opposite. I talked to you earlier about cross-selling. I talked to you earlier about no more than 5% taking more than one service line. Huge organic growth opportunities. We also grow organically every acquisition we've ever bought. Some several times over. And I'll talk to you about why, about that when we get to the acquisition slide. But very much where does that come from? So our strategy overview, really strong focus on growth and leadership in the market. We accelerate our growth through diversification. 
and selective acquisitions. At the moment, 50 acquisitions in pipeline. We're actively working on 12 and the others, but 12 aggressively at the moment. We're very careful. We work with people for a period of time. We like to look and see. We like to sit back and look at businesses for at least 12, 24 months before we buy them. We like to see track record. It's important to us. And we like to also decide where we think the market's moving towards. We have a flexible business model, which is very important. We drive industry-leading margins through the use of the model, scale and efficiency. We focus on the three fundamentals I talked about earlier. Service and cost effectiveness, very important to us. Price point is still very important in the market. A great service is also something which is very close to our hearts and we're very passionate about. And safety above everything. Innovation, clarity, I touched on earlier. So our growth drivers, where do they come from? The organic growth drivers come through the geographical expansion, our route to market, being local, so we've got localised engineers all around the country, less drive time, less bed nights, less travelling, makes us ultra competitive. Our renewal rates and our repair sales, pound for a pound, great organic growth driver in everything we do. Some parts of our business generate three pound to a pound, but on average it's a pound. Renewal rates high, very important, as I said earlier, and the cross-selling. Strong acquisition pipeline, over 50 targets. Track record of driving value. We often do several times our money. It's very important to us. We, we're, we're very much Yorkshire people in terms of acquisitions. We don't like to pay very much, and we like to drive value. It's very important to us. You'll see an acquisition slide which will say, we don't like paying more than five times PAT. It's important to us that we get it right, we buy well, and we create value. How do we create that value in acquisitions? Our repair model is more productive than anybody else in the sectors we're in. So we're instantly able to achieve growth. Our renewal rates are higher than anybody. So we're able to put baseline down there, and we're able to be able to have reoccurring income. Our selling techniques are better. More often than not, we, when we buy acquisitions, we buy the work at better prices than we have because we're the most cost-effective solution. So we're able to gain margin. Our efficiency is what makes us special in the marketplaces we're in. It makes us very different to our competition. We're not getting five or six hours out of our guys. They don't earn three or four hundred pounds a day for the business. They're earning six to six hundred to a thousand pounds a day. You don't have to be rocket scientists to work out where the margin comes from. We're a super efficient business. Small examples. When we get our van serviced, we take them in at five in the evening. We're getting back at eight in the morning. We don't have downtime. We don't believe in it. We have a fleet that aged for three years and it goes. We don't want repairs. We don't want vehicles off the road. What I'm really saying to you is the message is loud and clear that everything we do, however big or small, is focused to productivity and margin and efficiency and customer service. Very important. Our marketplace, that's slightly out of date because when we've now added fire, you're probably looking at a billion in fire. So certainly it's over a billion now. We've got a small market share. We've got a lot of density to do. We've got a lot of growth in there. And the new expansion was fire, which came out in September. And in demand, which is slightly hard to see from where I'm stood, the construction sector, still very buoyant. We're seeing a lot in the marketplace. <coughs> the FM industry changes. You've seen a lot of failures in the FM industry recently. And we worked for all of them. None of them has affected us. It won't affect us. What they're doing going forward in terms of being more selective of who they work for and who they work with actually only helps us. Reducing supply chain. We're the most cost effective solution. Why wouldn't they want to work with us? It just endorses what we do and how we do it. And regulation. Post Grenfell, you've never seen a marketplace more focused on compliance services. It's not about fire. That was the pictures on the TV. It's about electrical testing. It's about lining protection. It's about fire as well. It's about residential sprinklers. It's about all compliant services. The uptake in compliant services in 25 years I've been in the sectors has never been greater. Yes, we bought a residential sprinkler business and it was classed as you know, amazing timing. We didn't mean it to do that. We, it, we, it came to us in February. It just happened to be coincidental. But can we take advantage of that marketplace? Absolutely. We bought a business with a five million order book. It's nearly looking like 10 today, four months on. 
were being awarded blocks of tower blocks in the 70s and 80s virtually on a weekly basis. It won't be a one hit wonder, we'll get the installation value but we'll get the maintenance value afterwards. So virtually everything we install we get compliance services afterwards in long term contracts. So never look at it as a one off hit. We always look at it as reoccurring value as well. Strong track record of growth. So KGA, 34%. That might egg up a little bit this year. And the same with the EBIT, nearly 30%. So we're a business focused on growth. We're a business with people in the business who are high achievers. We want to do well. We want to achieve what we do in a, in a manner which is different to the rest of the market. You'll see just some statistics there. And I get re asked regularly, can we, you know, will the EBIT go up? I'm not going to sit here, stand there and say to you, it'll, it'll be 25% next year, but can we tick it up? The answer is yes. We certainly can tick it up. So we've got a clear strategy, organically and acquisitively. And I said it's very much, a, very much a marriage. And there's some other numbers there, which I'll leave you to just read for a second. Acquisition track record. Um, the middle bits are at the end of last year, but the top is total. So very much the business is, is a marriage of acquisitive growth and organic growth. We do that by leveraging the operating model. Any deferred consideration we do in any deal is always on milestone stretching targets, which are self-funding. So they're paying for themselves. They're usually payable in shares or cash at Peter's discretion, but it just gives us the flexibility going forward. We've got a real strong track record, as you can see there, of increasing what we buy. And as I said earlier, we're from Yorkshire, so we don't like to overpay. And it's important. And we don't think we need to overpay. And when we look at the marketplace, people can generally make more money out of the businesses selling them to us than they can doing it themselves. And that's what they see and feel. And the answer to that is, one, because we're efficient, but two, because we've got 17,000 customers, and it's growing. And every acquisition we do, we get a certain amount of customers and we're able to cross-sell into them. So the recent best acquisition, we've got 2,200 customers, 2,000 of them, 90% of them were new to us. So we're able to offer them all new services as well. <coughs> so huge opportunities there. So the acquisition of best, we did it in summer. It was a £15 million equity raise. Um, well oversubscribed. Nice business. 20% margins. But don't miss the key point. What well, a lot of people miss when we bought it. We went out and said, it's a 20% margin business. And everybody said, that's great. Fits with the group. Our lightning protection business within PTSG makes 28% operating profit. So will we expect to see that go up to that level? Obviously. We've been there since 2010. We don't expect to be making less. Their testing and inspection business made 27.5% 20, margin. Ours makes 45% operating profit. Their men were earning £400 a day for the business. I was earning £650 a day. They paid the same wages. It gives us scale. It gives us density. Are we able to convert that? You will see it coming. And that's some of the compelling rationale for doing the deal. But not to be missed in a summary. We bought the sprinkler business not long afterwards. And I've touched on it. Hell of a marketplace at the moment, residential sprinklers. Will it become legislation? We don't know the answer to that. We think it possibly could be. What we certainly know is there is unprecedented demand for this at the moment. And we don't see it easing off. The day after we bought this business, the BBC came out with a statement to say no more than 2% of residential towers have sprinklers. Big statement. We've done our market research. We know how much demand there is for this product. It very much complements the fire offering. It's not the only thing we do. The dry riser businesses have already doubled in size in less than 18 months since we bought them. So the investment case, PTSG, let me summarise. Market leader in attractive niche markets. So number one in plenty of markets. We've got a strong track record of growth, both organically and acquisitively. We're in, we've got an industry leading profit in every sector we do, and they're driven by a differentiated operating model. And that differentiated operating model is very much about efficiency, how we do, what we do, when we do it, who we do it for, and the ability of lots of, of, lots of 
individual elements which just make margin. We're margin focused in everything we spend, everything we win, everything we deliver. We've got significant latent potential of growth drivers through penetrate, market penetration and cross-selling. I've said it more than once, I'm not going to say it again. A track record of successfully integrated acquisitions, doubling, trebling the sizes of them. That's what we're about. We're about getting a return on investment within 12 months or less. You might think that's ambitious. We've done 23, we've probably done it 22 times out of 23. 23 acquisitions in 10 years. Very much about marrying the cultures of the businesses. And we also take our time. We want to get the best out of the acquisition. We don't want to just jump to another one. We want to make sure we're getting the value out of the acquisition. It's very important to us to drive all of the PTSG models of renewals, cross-selling, the repair model, all those growth drivers, as well as the people achievement pieces we can achieve across the board as well as scale of economies, as well as market penetration. The high level of recurring revenue and income, as I said when I first started, a very small statement, a very big point. It's very much an endorsement of PCSG. Very important. We've got a highly experienced and ambitious management team. I'll let you guys decide that. Um, and really to summarise, highly attractive financial characteristics of high margins, low capex, high returns, Good underlying cash generation and a progressive dividend policy. The next slide really is PTSG on a page. I'll let you focus on that.